Hello and welcome to another exciting Breakfast with Unity. I'm your host, Max Moreau. And today, uh, Joseph gave us a, uh, asked if we could do a um, curved projectile um, uh, trace path, basically. So we've done, we've done a ballistic projectile thing before, but it was for finding out where to aim to hit something. This one we're going to actually try and trace where a projectile will go once fired um, before we fire it. Um, now, this is going to be a little bit math heavy, probably, and uh, this is definitely going to be a two-parter because I want to do um, I want to do two of the things that he asked. He asked for three things. He asked for the path of the projectile once fired. He asked for um, the explosion radius for wh where it's going to hit, and he asked for bounce stuff. We're going to do the first two. The bouncing is uh, is considerably harder to get perfect, and actually most games don't get it perfectly accurate. Um, uh, it's especially hard if we don't have access to the internals of the physics system, which we really don't. So, um, so we have to make some assumptions about how they handle collision, which is not something I'm going to be going through. So, um, so here's what we're going to do. We're just going to do the uh, we're just going to do the first one today, and then if we have time, we'll do the second. But I'm certain it'll be a two parter because this is going to be a little bit a little bit tricky, especially for morning. So. So, first off, I've got a couple of things. I've got our standard wiki trajectory of a projectile. We might use this. We might not use either of these, actually. And, um, and then some, some, uh, some additional, like, vector versions of the, uh, of the stuff. So, uh, so we'll have some reference here, maybe. Um, but I'm going to actually just try and push through it at first, because what we're going to be doing is doing a stepped diagram of where the path is. So, um... What are we going to do? So let's create a um, new folder. Sorry, I didn't do this yet. Uh, 66. We're going to call this Ballistic Path. And uh, let's create... Okay, we've got a new scene. I'm just going to save this scene. Ballistic Path. I'm going to throw this into here. Um, and uh, let's just... Uh, I'm going to, yeah, we're just going to write the path solver first. We're not going to have the shooting and stuff just yet. Let's just let's just let's just get something on the screen. So the way we're going to do this, way, the way we're going to display this is we're going to use a, um, we are going to use a, not trail renderer, but a uh, line renderer, which I don't think has a creator there. We have to create a empty game object and put a line renderer component on it. I don't even know where it is, so I'm going to search for it in add component, line renderer. There it is. It's in one of these menus. It's probably in like effects or something. There it is, line renderer. Um, so, so what we're going to be doing here is... So this thing, we've used it a couple times before. We're going to turn off use world space um, because we want positions to be relative to our current position, I think. We might turn that back on. We'll, we'll see. Um, and, uh, and as it is right now, so we can position this thing somewhere, and then we can, uh, we can adjust the, the line segment definitions here, and it'll create stuff, and we can add additional points. And I forget what we use this for, but we use it for something, so, so we can do this to, um, to kind of like path things out. So this is what we're going to use to actually display the path. And then we have to just make the path. So we're going to create... There's a difference between displaying the path and creating the path. I don't know. Uh, paraphrasing Morpheus here. So what we're going to do is... Uh, we're going to call this uh, Ballistic Path. Um, I'm going to call it Render Ballistic Path. Render Ballistic Path. As I said, we're going to start this just uh, just to figure out the math behind it, and then and then we'll we'll connect the dots uh, after the fact to uh, make it into something that's uh, more live that we're using as an actual tool. I just want to get things rolling on the math part because this is going to be the hard part. So, so I'm going to put the game object over on the left side of the screen, and we're going to kind of fire it over to the right. So I'm going to rotate this thing because we're going to assume that we're firing out. Somewhat from the front, we're going to actually have an angle on it, but um, but we'll have some adjustable values. Um, so what are we going to do? We're going to rotate this on the Y by ninety. There we go. And um, and let's uh, get coding. So we're going to have a couple things that we need. Um, we're going to need a public vector three, 
initial velocity. We're going to need a, um, let's see, so that's the initial velocity. We're going to need a public. Actually, I'm not going to use, we'll assume the angle based on where we're facing. Um, so, so all we need is an initial velocity for right now. And I'm just going to set this to 10.0F for right now. Um, and, and what else are we going to do? So there's force modes and stuff. We're going to, we're going to sketch this out and then see where we're at. And this actually might be a three-parter, honestly. So, um, update. So what we're going to do is, um, we need to each update, figure out the path of the projectile. So we're probably going to have another couple, couple things here. We could do, um, um, a time resolution. So I'm going to go ahead and do, um, public float, uh, time resolution. And we're going to default this to uh, 0.02F. I think that coincides with the default um, 50 hertz uh, uh, physics system. Let's just check that. So, oh, it's actually not in physics, it's in time. It's slightly separate. So yeah, fixed time step is set to 0 0.02. So that's the reason I'm going to use that as our default for right now. This might actually be more aggressive than we need. So um, all we're going to do is... Um, Oh yeah, we should probably have a max time or something public uh, float um, uh, max time. And I'm going to set this to um, 10 seconds projectile. So we're going to try some fancy stuff here. We're going to do a for loop. So uh, um, actually, yeah, for int, actually float i um, equals actually I'm going to call it T float T equals um, uh, 0, 0.0 F uh, T is less than max time T plus equals um, time resolution so this means we're going to move T from zero to max time, and we're going to move it in steps of time resolution. So this will give us points in time. And as I said, we set up our time resolution initially to exactly match the physics system. That will probably provide better results in any case, but you could always make it be less or more accurate uh, at your heart's content. So um, we're going to need um, a, uh, I'm going to create a private um, line renderer reference that we're going to fill in, uh, line renderer. We're going to be doing this a lot more when Unity 5.0 comes out. Um, so line renderer equals git component in git component line renderer. All right. So save and what are we doing? So, so we have our line renderer and we have our T variable and we have our initial velocity. And we have, um, we have, actually it's a vector three. I don't know why it's equals 10.0F. That doesn't make any sense. Um, initial velocity. Yeah, let's actually make it, let's use the float. Yeah, make it equal 10.0F. So, so what we're going to do is, um, we're going to first start with, um, some information that we have. So we need to get our initial velocity vector first. Um, and what are we doing with that? So our velocity vector will be um, vector three velocity vector equals, uh, we're gonna use our transform dot, sorry, transform dot forward times initial velocity. Um, so this gives us our, our initial velocity vector, and um, what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to, so we have positions, how do we do set position? It's like line render dot set, set position, index vector three position, set vertex count. Okay, so that's important. So we're going to need to do that first. So. So let's do the set vertex count up here. So um, 
um, line renderer dot set vertex count. So this is the number of points that we're going to have, and this count is going to be um, max time divided by time resolution, and then cast to an int. Hopefully this will kind of work. So we save that. And now we have our point step, and now we just need to set each point at each point position. So, um, so that means we're going to have to have a, we're going to have to have an iterator as well, which is good that I called this T. So, um, let's go ahead and, uh, make a int index equals zero. And at the end of this do index plus, no, just index. It's a, it's mad at me because I'm, I'm typing around a bunch of errors. So incomplete thoughts so here we go line renderer what we're going to do is set vertex uh set uh, position and we give it an index and a vector three position so the very first one at t0 will just be simply um uh index sorry uh index and the position will just be transform dot position um but we're going to probably change this line in a second here. So, so because this, once it loops through, it won't be useful anymore. So what we actually want to do is we're going to need vector three current position equals transform dot position. So now we're going to put current position in here. Current position. And then what we are going to do is we're going to increase, we're going to change the position of current position. So, so, so we're going to have, I'm first going to just do the linear path and then we're going to add the gravity to it. So, cause I want to see if something's working with what we've got so far at all. Uh, so render.set position, current position, and um, then current position, plus equals um, initial velocity times uh, um, times time resolution. There we go. I was going to do time dot delta time, but that's not appropriate. So, um, so this should give us a bunch of dots that are in a straight line, hopefully. So let's see if this will work. So the time flot could not be found yet. There's no such thing as a flot. I'm sure that there were people commenting on that one. Public flot. Uh, no overload method for set position takes one argument. Oh, uh, set position. Somehow we lost index in there at some point. Index current position. Save. And plus equal cannot be applied to vector three and float. Oh, current position plus equals, oh, initial velocity, not initial velocity. We want the velocity vector, sorry. Velocity vector, yay. So we hit play and we haven't attached anything to anything so we shouldn't see anything. We'll just see what we have already. So if we attach this now to our game object here and hit play, it has changed, excellent. It's uh, not really doing things the way I wanted it to, but it's uh, it's trying. It's a straight line, so that's a good that's a good that's a good sign. I was expecting a straight line, but um, I don't know why it's uh, so these positions. Okay, maybe we need do need to set this to world space. So let's try that. I'm going to hit play. That makes a lot of sense actually. So we're going to set use world space. And then we're going to hit play, and it should be pointed to the right. There we go, it's pointed to the right. Yay. So that's exciting. So, so now all we need to do is add gravity into the equation. We also potentially need to add drag. I'm not going to worry about drag right now. Um, but, um, but you might want to, if you need drag, you might need drag. Um, I think the default physics materials for most things, like if I just create a like 3D object sphere and put a... Um, uh, physics rigid body on it 
I think they default to not having any drag whatsoever. And that's pretty common in games um, because it's just an additional calculation um, and you typically... People are used to calculate without it. I know that sounds strange, but but it's true. Like humans, humans don't really care too much about wind um, or drag. So uh, what are we doing? So all we need to do is we need to. So we're adding the velocity vector, but we also need to uh, change the velocity vector by gravity. So uh, I'm going to do that at the last line before we index out. So um, we might have to reorganize these at some point to get them to match up with the physics system. But we're, we're, what we're going to do is velocity vector plus equals physics dot gravity. And yes, we want plus equals because physics dot gravity has negative values for um, it. It defaults to, let's look at it, uh, physics. It defaults to negative 9.81, which is what you'd expect for meters. So, so there you go. So physics dot gravity is a vector. It's useful. We can just add it. And actually, that's not what we want. Physics dot gravity times time resolution. Otherwise, it'll drop like a rock. Well, more faster than a rock. So if we hit play now, we should see a curve to our. There it is. So we can uh, we can now uh, kind of play around with things a little bit. So if we take our game object and we rotate it um, so that the uh, so that it has a different angle on this. You can see that the curve changes as you would expect a ballistic curve to change. It's moving really slow right now because we're we're inspecting the line render. If I close these positions up, it'll it'll shore up a lot better. Um, see how smooth it is now. Um, and we can adjust the um, the velocity to change the path that is going. And all we're doing is we're just drawing a bunch of points that shows where it is at a particular time and then drawing lines between them. It's all pink right now because we didn't give it a material. I'm just going to give it a quick material. Um, let's just do default diffuse for right now. Um, not Pro Baker. Uh, default diffuse. That's not much better looking. Well, it's just, and it's lit now too, so that's kind of funny. Um, but yeah, so we have this thing, and we can adjust the the uh, that with that, and we can adjust the uh, the angle with adjusting the actual angle. The reason I did this is so that we can set this up on a first-person view controller. When we change the angle of our view, it will automatically change the angle of the projectile. Um, we might still attach it to some other object on the player so that it doesn't come out of their face, but um, but we'll see how how things actually go on that. I think I'm going to actually break it off at this point, although I am going to change the uh, I am going to create a uh, material real quick. I just want some sort of unlit. Actually, let's do self-illuminating because unlit doesn't have you know, able to choose a texture. I need to add that to. I, I should. I need to make a pack of just like stuff that's useful to have in Unity right off the bat because uh, there's some shaders like like it would be nice to have a tintable texture shader for unlit. Things like that. So um, we're just going to call this uh, projectile path, and let's make it like I don't know. Let's make it green. I don't know why I bothered to do that, but I don't know why I didn't attach it to the game object because I don't like to attach things to game objects, evidently. But yeah, so we'll just do this. I'm just going to start it with uh, with more of an angle so that you can see. So it looks cooler. Yeah, that's good. And let's just save scene, save all. And we didn't have any like errors or anything coming up when we we're playing, right? No index out of bounds or anything. Nope, looking good. All right. So that's what we're gonna start with today, and then we'll continue this uh, tomorrow. So thank you very much for watching. Um, if you have any questions, please email me uh, pushypixels at pushypixels.com. You can also tweet me at Drakfire, that's D-R-A-K-F-Y-R-E. Please support us on Patreon, that's uh, patreon.com slash cookingwithunity. Really appreciate your support, and you guys have a great one. I will catch you tonight with more Scape, and catch you tomorrow with more ballistic stuff.